Um, yeah, I, I get involved pretty early on. Um, I was about a year and a half, just over a year and a half on the last film. Um, so quite a long time before we start actually prepping on pre-production. And that's just trying to just, you know, muddle up some ideas with Tom and McHugh and trying to keep the action close to the story and keep the characters' um, relationship with the action correct so that we're not just, I'm not building action sequences that don't relate to the, to the character. So we get very involved together. It's, it's, I think it's super important um, because when, you know, we tell a story through the action, um, there's a good story through the fights, a good story through the chopper sequences, through the um, bike and car stuff. And if you lose focus on the story, it just becomes an action sequence as a placeholder to take you from one part of the script to another or one scene to another. I think audiences notice that. So it's important to have that collaboration so that we can make sure we stay true to the, to the mission experience and, you know, and to the characters. Um, well, Mission Impossible, obviously, it's because it's so character and story based. Um, we have to stay true to the Ethan character. So all his action sort of has to follow the, the last movie. We can't suddenly change his fight style or <clears throat> the way he moves. We, we have to continue. I try and sort of call it Ethan 2.0 each time where he's maybe honed his skills a bit more. He's learned one or two tricks, um, but we can't change that style because the audiences already know he's a well-established character. <clears throat> the only thing we can change is, is how he completes his missions, how he goes about them and try and create these, you know, these spectacles, these big action sequences, as long as they stay true to, to story and character. So the big challenge is on the, on the missions is to create practical action sequences that hold up um, and that wow audiences and that are fun. Um, whereas on a movie like The Mummy, it's CG heavy and his character is completely different. Um, we, you know, Tom will explore that character and come up with something great and it's what he does. Um, and I'll pitch action that I think suits that style and that character to try and engage the audiences. Again, my biggest thing is not to create action sequences just for the sake of having an action sequence placeholder. Um, it's to create action sequences that are driven you know, very strongly by the story. Yes, yeah, so that was a, a fantastic little sequence where, like say, we're going through the columns, it's quite narrow. Basically, it's a foot, you know, meant for pedestrians rather than a motorbike. Um, and I remember, yeah, uh, being directed to, you know, basically drive down it. I thought, well, I'm just going to go a little bit faster than kind of told and just, yeah, and luckily for, us, for me, um, they kind of like the speed and we've got the, the dust flying off the bike and everything. So, and it looked really cool having quite, quite the, the, the visual look of it. Yeah, all the columns great. flying past, so yeah, I kind of cheekily thought I'd go a bit faster than that. It was great. <laughs> we, we have a camera bike that we <clears throat> we use, yeah. who, which was tracking yeah, it's that, um, and it's this electric camera bike that accelerates like zero to hundred, and because it's electric, it's instant talk. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, driven by um, another superbike racer that yeah, Jenny knows really well, too. Kieran Clark, who's uh, phenomenal. So he he would have to adjust speed to to Jenny and and keep up with us. So we had two bikes, Jenny in the path and Kieran just outside tracking uh, on this bike. And it was, yeah. it was pretty impressive considering we're in this like palatial grounds where people come to walk and like sit on the bench and reflect and, and have a moment. And you got these two bikes like tearing through it and skidding to a stop at the end. Yeah, yeah it, it wants to be more real. And I think the audience can connect to a fight that feels a bit more desperate that it's not so skillful and so convenient you know they're, they're fighting for their life and uh, the Locke character was meant to be one of the scariest characters and one of the most powerful characters that's the way he was portrayed in the script so it wasn't going to be an easy battle and then to for him to basically be beating up both Ethan and Walker these two tough characters I mean Henry Cavill's a big tough guy um, and to be kicking them without looking at them and doing stuff like that we designed that fight took a long time to design that fight to be very character driven as well and to, to bring that across, which, which I'm glad it did, you know, according to reviews. And um, it, it's super important for us to, to do that. Um, with Elsa, you really want to feel like they're out of options. Like Benji's trying his best. Um, he, he's out of options. Elsa, we've seen as fierce. Um, but uh, Sean Harris, you know, he, he knows, Lane knows her style. So when she tries to mount him and do her famous thigh locks and leg locks, which we, which we you know, invented for her in five, uh, he throws her off. 
Uh, he sees it before she's doing it. Um, it's almost like a sort of MMA in the air, if you like. Um, and her, her tricks aren't working. So it's a little bit more desperate because, again, you know, Lane is an evil character. So you had Locke, who's meant to be a super powerful uh, character, and you got Lane, who we've already established, is everything is inside. Uh, and that's the way I wanted him to come across. Everything's in his mind. Um, his fighting and everything is in his mind. You don't know, you can't predict what he's going to do because he's that psychotic type character. And uh, yeah, she had to pull out all the stops whilst balancing it with seeing Benji strangling to death. And I don't know, you know, she's got choices. And we wanted to, I wanted to feel that desperation, that tension, and, and I want the audience to feel it. And I hope, hopefully they did. There's always a way to do things. <clears throat> There's a way to do anything, in, in my opinion, in the world, you know. You can do absolutely anything uh, safely. Um, if something's absolutely impossible to do safely, well, then it either has to be done with the aid of CG and stage work, which is not the, what we do in missions, so I doubt we'd put it in a Mission Impossible movie. But anything in the world is possible to do. It's just whether it fits the story. And if it doesn't fit the story, then it's not worth doing. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs>